We've made spheres and planes, now it's time for cubes in Chapter 12 of the Ray Tracer Challenge. Any ray object we create needs a method of intersection to work, and that's the first step. Seven rays are created to test each side of the box, and one ray that's actually originating from inside. While the book has us use a method called Local Intersect, which is a good name because we are performing the intersections in local space, my method is actually called Intersect, so you'll see a change in a minute. When the ray intersects the cube, we'll get two intersection points, one going in and the other one coming out. That's why we're going to be checking a T1 and a T2 value. The cube class needs to implement the getNormal and the intersect method, something all children of ray objects are required to do. A second method called check axis is going to perform a calculation for the intersection point for the x, y, and z axes separately. The algorithm is clever and will use what the book calls the largest minimum and smallest maximum to determine where intersections occur. However, I make a small mistake here and write maximum twice, which will lead to some problems shortly. In check axis, infinities are possible due to division. The book, being open to any programming language, requires you to figure out the infinity problem yourself. Luckily, C Sharp has both positive and negative infinities defined for floating point numbers, and all we need to do is preserve the sign. But I'm inexperienced when it comes to using infinities, and adding on the max mistake I just made, it's going to take me a little while to figure out why things go wrong. First test is a failure. I make some changes to my variable names to make sure things are clear, as well as double check my input values, which is one of the most common things I tend to screw up. Now we get to some experimentation with infinities, using the built-in types and an explanation the book provides to handle it. This isn't necessary, I'm still using the incorrect max method, but I'm playing around thinking that it's the culprit. I even create my own constants for infinity, but still nothing works. And there's a zoom in for clarity. That's what happens when you blindly copy and paste a line of code. Now all of the tests pass just fine. The next test is to see whether or not we're able to miss the cube. This doesn't require any new code, just a test case with vectors flying off the sides of the cube. Time to add all those values for the test. Sometimes, it's just coding up the tests that take the most amount of time. The getNormal method needs to return the direction of the surface based upon what face we are hitting. We have six different normal possibilities, one for each of the cube's faces. I need to figure out which direction the vector is most pointed in by taking the absolute value of each coordinate separately and then maxing them all together. 
I also have to remember to transform the point to local space for when I eventually add transforms to my cubes. The last test is to create a room of cubes and a table with legs and a top. I throw down some patterns and reflectivity to make the most of the last few chapters we've been working on. This time, I remember to add a light source before rendering, so that's not a problem. And with that, our first render is complete. However, I only appear to have a checkered floor. My walls aren't appearing at all. A quick rotation and nothing changes. Even a change to the scale parameter does nothing. This is starting to look like an issue with transforming objects from world space to local space. I still haven't quite picked up on the problem, and I remove excess geometry to simplify things to just one or two objects. Definitely starting to look like it's a transformation issue at this point. Diving back into the intersection method, I see that I don't convert the ray into object space. A few moments later after rendering, and now my cube is scaling properly. Well, that's not right. Some strange stippling pattern on the back there. I try removing the pattern element, but I get the same effect. I go ahead and add a cube in the center just to see its effect. I remember that patterns and the epsilon value were causing me issues earlier, but I'm not seeing anything blatantly wrong in the code. Even if I change the floor from a pattern to just using the standard material properties, the problem still shows up. I notice I'm doing three transformations in a row here. Scale, rotate, and translate. I wonder if I'm getting some numerical instability, and that's causing these issues somehow. Don't ask me why. I remove the extra rotate and just scale in a different direction to get the same effect. And wouldn't you know it, that seems to have fixed the problem. Fixed it for now. Time to make the table. Nothing fancy, just four legs and a top. It takes me a few tries to get the numbers right, but I eventually get there. I do make a silly mistake at first and use the same variable name over and over, meaning legs two, three, and four don't get any matrix transforms. And there we have it, cubes. This chapter was a nice break from the complexity of the previous chapter. And next time, we get to add another primitive object, cylinders. Hopefully that goes as easily as this chapter. Remember, if you're following along, let me know how you're doing in the comments below. And with that, I'll see you all next time. So long and goodbye.